All right, so now is the point where we basically get to break our lathe. So everything can be done on the lathe that you're working on, uh, but it is a lot easier if you have a second one. So what we're going to do first is this is the new Acme rod that we're going to replace this screw with. And this isn't the, this is from McMaster Car. It says the, uh, it's labeled under Precision Acme, Acme Screw or Acme Lead Screw. And it's relatively cheap. It's like 30 bucks for three feet, somewhere in that neighborhood. And it has an accuracy of nine thousandths per foot. So they also make an, uh, an ultra precision one that is more accurate, but the price is exorbitant compared to what this is. I mean, you're looking at for a three foot piece somewhere around $125. So this should be more than accurate enough for what, we're do what I'm doing in my shop. And honestly, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but let's kind of center into the most worn section of the thread here. You can see the difference between them here this is in the middle of the thread and you can see the difference as we go along from the start of the thread there so you know nobody can really tell me that this here is less accurate than what was originally on here so we are making an improvement so what we want to do right now <clears throat> while we still have this in our 13 inch lathe we want to or while you guys still have it in your original lathe i'm just going to do this on my nine inch because i have a a collet chuck attachment for that it makes it easier so we're going to take a 11 and a half piece 11 and a half inch piece of this threaded stock and we're going to turn down that's one one and a half inches to seven sixteenths of an inch now I can't do half inch because half inch won't get rid of all these threads. I need a perfectly um, straight section with no threads. And you want to get that as accurate as possible because what we're going to do is we're going to cut off here, here, and we're going to drill through. And that section that we turn is going to fit right inside here. So that is the plan for right now. And I will have all drawings for these later on once I get the measurements 100% uh, complete. So right now I'm just going to set up on the 9 inch lathe in my collet chuck and we'll turn a 7 16 diameter for an inch and a half on the end of this rod. Okay so now I know you're going to ask how are we going to be able to machine pieces on the lathe we're modifying if we have to remove the screw. Well we already know that we need a 7 16 diameter on the end of that Acme screw, so you can do that with the screw with the actual screw and handle still in place. When you go to modify and cut off that gear blank, the only thing we need to do with that is face each side and then drill and ream it. So we need a way to face on the machine that we're modifying without the screw in place. It's a simple way to do that. This right here is a Gibbs screw, okay? So if you, that kind of pushes in a tapered wedge which allows you to take up for wear in the dovetails. But if you crank that all the way in and as high as you can without breaking it obviously, that'll lock your cross slide in place. Then you can swing your compound over to zero degrees which will be parallel to your chuck. Throw an indicator in your tool holder and run it across the fat sur flat surface of your chuck give it a tap left and right until you read exactly zero. That way there, the only thing we're going to be doing is facing that part. You can then face with your compound. And then drilling and reaming is going to be done with the tailstock. That has nothing to do with your carriage at all. So that's how you can do it if you don't have another machine. Okay, so I have that Acme screw in a collar chuck and the collar chuck allows me to get this nice and tight without ruining any of the threads and making any marks on it. You can do this with the three, with the four jaw. I highly suggest the four jaw, something you can dial in. The way to do that is under each jaw, just put a piece of aluminum, something soft that won't mar these threads, and then you can tighten it down. And if you get a dial indicator, just get one of the larger little button attachments that has a flat surface on it, or even one of those plunger back dial indicators that will ride over these threads and you can dial it in. So right now we're going to take this diam diameter here down to 7 16 by a length of an inch and a half. So we're going to face it first and then we're going to turn it. So let me just speed this lathe up. Again, you could do this on the lathe that you're modifying. Just so happens that I 
have another lathe with a nice collet attachment so it's way easier for me just to do it on the second lathe rather than on the 13. I'm getting some deflection in there, so I'm going to bring up a center. That should leave me about two thousandths there that needs to come off, two to three. <clears throat> yep, we are at. Four hundred and uh, forty thousandths and we need four three seventy five. So I'll just polish off that last three thousandths and I will get that down to exactly 7 16 reason being is we want a nice tight fit when we put that 7 16 reamer down okay so this is the end the other opposite end from end to end this is 11 and a half inches so what we want to do is just make a nice little uh, taper on this end to make an easy start to the thread the way I'm going to do that <clears throat> is just going to use a file but first I just want to knock these threads down by hand and I'll just kind of hand lay a taper in there and then refine it with a file. Okay, so here's where we pass the point of no return. So I'm just going to use my collar chuck here to hold this. And need a piece of wood as a protector. Okay, so I have the handle here in the collar chuck just to hold it, and here's where we pass the point of no return. So, we're just going to hack this sucker off. <clears throat> and we're going to hack this handle side off right there. Okay, so you can just see the dial indicator there. And we're pretty much within a half. Now I have little aluminum shims here to make sure that I'm clamping on the aluminum and not on the gear. Now I know I didn't explain it in the last section. But the reason why I did not leave this shaft on there to check on the shaft is because I don't trust the straightness of this. If you look here in the middle, you can see tracks of like a, a pipe wrench or a pair of channel locks. So I don't know how wrenched on this thing was and if it was out of kilter. So I figured I do trust this gear to be round. So I'd rather chuck on that than chuck on this. But if you're satisfied that this is straight, it's easier to chuck on this for you. So now we're just going to face off that little nub. 
Okay, so we're zeroed at about half a thousandths on this inside and about one thousandths on this outside. I'm just going to uh, face this off and then I'm going to double check and make sure that that tool pressure didn't move this around any. Um, again, I just didn't quite trust this outside of the shaft because I know there was a little bit of a wobble on this side and I kind of just didn't want to throw that into the system. But if your shaft is relatively straight, it's a lot easier to chuck on this and then just true up that outside edge. So, let's just uh, get this faced. So all I want to do is just make sure that that's nice and stable, which it should be, but we're just going to double check ourselves because why not? Uh, let me tilt you guys out just a hair so you can see that indicator there. So we're pretty much within a half there, and this should be more or less within one out here. One and a half to two. There's a little bit of a bump in there because there's a little kind of scratch mark right there. As you can see, you can see it almost looks like a thread there. That's making it bounce a little bit there. So you get that dip, then and over. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to ream this for seven sixteenths. So the seven sixteenths rod that we cut down is only going to come up to about here. But... On the other side, we're going to have a half inch hole. So what we can do is drill straight through this and ream straight through this 7 sixteenths. And then once we get this set, we can enlarge the other side for half inch. So what I'm going to do right now is just start off with the center drill here. <clears throat> And now we're going to send through a 27 64 drill bit that's one size down from 7 16 so that that 7 16 reamer doesn't have a whole lot to take out of this. Okay, so we are now through. What we're going to do is take our 7 16 reamer. We're going to slow this machine down. And we're going to ream straight through. Okay. 
while we have this in back gear, what we're gonna do is just come in and just break this edge here. There we go. And what we're gonna do is put this back into normal speed. And just with the file, I'm gonna break this outside edge. Okay, so now that we have that hole through there, what we got to do is work on the opposite side and face this edge flat and take a tiny, tiny cut, just a couple of thousandths off this inside face to make sure that's perfectly flat. And then we are going to drill this and ream it for a half inch down to the end of this gear. So now, because we put that hole all the way through, we have two very good areas to indicate off of. We have this outside edge here. And then we also have the hole that we reamed. So we have two areas to indicate off of. Okay, I'm getting ready to face this off. I just made one cut just to make this perfectly flat. And what I did is I measured from the face to this collar on all sides just to make sure that this wasn't wobbling around like crazy. It may or may not show up on camera, but over here it looks like it's running out a lot. And that's mostly where, uh, if I back you off a little bit. So if you look like right around this area in this front face here this is running pretty true uh, the bore is running almost perfectly true but out here you'll get a little bit of a wobble but if you look when I measure up here near where that gear actually rides so that's we're getting 985 86 thousandths and if I measure closer towards the end you can see we're getting uh, 975 thousandths so it also bears out when I take a uh, square and put it on against this, I can see the taper in it. So there's wear here, so you'll see this side running out, but this bore is running true, which is what we really care about, because that sucker's all the way through, and we had indicated our uh, perfectly straight surface. So just try and explain that a little bit. Okay, let's finish facing this off. So you can see in the camera, those faces look pretty good. If I back off a little bit, you may see a little bit of wobble back here somewhere. face there all right we just touched so I'm just taking a tiny tiny cut just to make sure that's nice and smooth and perfectly straight okay there we go okay so we're gonna come in with that 3164 drill bit and all I'm doing is coming right up to the flutes meet the end of that gear section and just made a shopping mark so we're just gonna come right into that shopping mark okay the light might blow out that line but it is right there and we're right into that shopping mark Okay, we have our half inch reamer in here, also with a little dot on there, but I should be able to feel when this bottoms out, but... Helps if you put the back gear right back in. Okay, should feel it bottom out. There it is, right there, just hit the bottom. Start turning the chuck and then tighten. And while we have everything set up, 
you're just going to come in here and just break that edge. This will allow us to put our shaft in pretty easy. So all we're doing is breaking that burr on that edge. And also, while we're here, what we can do is grab our file. Just make sure there's no burr on this outside edge. And there you go. That's it.